A very special guest joins us today. He is Robert Kiyosaki, best-selling author of several books, including the number one finance book in the world, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book that inspired several generations to take on financial freedom. And it's actually the principles of that book, Robert, that inspired me to go off my own. And I want to talk about some of these principles with our audience, your knowledge of how to fight what's coming next. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the David Lynn Report. Very honored to host you, Robert. Well, congratulations. You know, I mean, that's a big step. I, I still remember the day I left, uh, I left my company. Man, it was a big step. I was um, 1976 or something. It was terrifying. So congratulations. And you're, I was saying you're, you. very, you're an excellent interviewer. You know your stuff. So Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I come from a line of entrepreneurs uh, in my family, following in their footsteps, following in your footsteps. You're an entrepreneur. You have been your whole life. You've preached it. You actually are one of the few people who do what you preach. You've done it. You're successful. Um, we're going to be talking about your new book as well. You have a new book coming out April 6th. I'll let you talk about that. I wasn't even finished reading your last book, The Capitalist Manifesto. Great book. And you've already got a new one on the in the works. You've written that in, what, a week? A week? Amazing stuff, Robert. We know you as an author, and we, we know you as a veteran as well. I, I, I want to get some of your wartime stories. But first, let me talk about this tweet you recently made. You said, please, 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 world economy on verge of collapse. Runs on banks next. Savings frozen. Bail-ins next. I make no money when you buy real silver. I simply want you prepared for what is coming. What exactly is coming, Robert? You said a lot of things in that tweet that aren't very good. No, uh, as you may have, you know, I don't, I don't know how, I've been tracking this since I was a kid, you know, since I was 17. 1964, President Johnson took the dollar, or put the silver dollar and made it fake silver dollars and dimes and quarters. So that's why the American coins have the copper tinge around it. It's called, you know, fake money. But what's happening is that, uh, so the BRICS nation are coming, you know, Russia, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and now Saudi Arabia coming after us. Um, <clears throat> what's happening is that in 2017, the BIS, Bank of International Settlements, made gold tier one asset. So up until then, the U.S. Treasury was tier one assets. So the whole world is filled with U.S. treasuries and bonds. And as you and I have talked over the years, I don't like treasuries and bonds and because they're fake. So what's going to happen is when they keep raising interest rates, those treasuries, will def they're becoming worthless. You know, let's say you have a treasury at 5% or a bond at 5% and the interest rates go to 10%. It's going to collapse the system. So like Japan which has had quantitative easing for years and years and years and years now is filled with U.S. treasuries. So is China. So is the Fed. And so it just started to happen, you know, a few months of 2017 again, there was a reverse repo. And a reverse repo was what happened just before 2008 in America. And a reverse repo is very simply this, is what happens is the Fed will give money to, let's say, a tier one bank, like, let's say, Bank of America. A reverse repo is this. So if a Fed gives money to Bank of America, that's called a repo. So they're, they're backing up Bank of America. A reverse repo is Bank of America and all the tier one banks give it back to the Fed. They don't want the money. They don't want the bond. And it's not that they don't want the bond. When they give the money, when the bank, let's say Bank of America, gives the money back to the Fed, that's saying we don't want to lend money anymore because it's an indictment. Andy Sheckman says this. He says it's an indictment of the U.S. economy. We're going down. Now, if that goes down, they keep raising interest rates. All those bonds will crash because, you know, who wants a 5% bond when you can get a 10% bond? And the rumor is, this is according to Andy Sheckman, a long shot is this Japan may join the BRICS, Brazil, India. And what will happen is then instead of a bailout, you know, bailouts, what happened with Lehman Brothers in 2008, 
<clears throat> and so the, the taxpayer gave money to Lehman Brothers. What will happen is this, there'll be a bail-in, which happened in Cyprus in 2020, uh, 2008, is Bank of America, when they give all those treasuries back or the bonds back to the Fed, people will run, will run on Bank of America. And Bank of America will say, "We." Uh, so you and I go to the bank and say, we want our money back. We want our savings back. And Bank of America says, our door is shut because there's a run on the bank. But guess what? Instead of your cash or your savings, we'll give you back stock in Bank of America. That's a bail in. Now, I hope it doesn't happen, but that's what I was writing about. So as you know, I'm a, I'm a huge gold, silver nut. And I would rather have silver right now, which is the biggest bargain in world history today. It's it's the, it's the, you know, real estate was my generation's investment because it was debt. For your generation, it's silver. Because it's my, today in America, it's cost me 30 bucks to buy a silver, a silver eagle. 30 bucks. You know, this stuff is trash. This is trash here. Cash is trash. So that's a bail in, bail out. <clears throat> um, that's what happens. You have a repo and a reverse repo. So the reverse repo is the banks are giving back the money to the Fed. We don't want it. You wrote in your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, well, many interesting things. One of the quotes that I jotted down, the primary difference between a rich person and a poor person is how they manage fear. There's a lot to be fearful of in this world today. Can you name a few of the biggest risks that we face as citizens of the world and how do we manage our fear of what's coming up? Well, the fear is when you have so many people, you know, all over the world who went to school and drank this Kool-Aid. Go to school. This is my poor dad. You know, Rich Dad Poor Dad is my book. Still number one in the world after 26 years uh, by, by Publishers Weekly, not me. So what happens? You go to school, get a job, work hard, pay taxes. Save money. Buy a house because your house is an asset. Get out of debt and put your money in a well-diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. Worst financial advice possible. But that Kool-Aid is swinging around all of the heads, all of our heads who went to school. And so the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad is that was a song of my poor dad. Go to, my poor dad was a PhD Go to school, get a job, work hard, get good grades, work hard, save money, uh, get out of get out of debt, buy a house, get out of you know all that money. I mean, pay your taxes, save money, buy a house, and then invest in the stock market. I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, this the Fed, this guy Powell just announced yesterday, he's going to raise interest rates again, again. So what that's going to do is going to, Andy Sheckman says this, this is called the three times crash. All paper assets, stock bonds, mutual funds, ETFs crash. Real estate's going to crash. And this is going to crash, the U.S. dollar. So far, you know, David, you know, all the years you've interviewed me, I'm a freaking gold and silver bug, as you know, and not ETFs. I am hard assets. Hard assets. This is my gold mine here. I just took it public this year, July 2022, 2022, on the New York Stock Exchange. You can go to my website and see me ringing the bell. It's the richest gold mine in America. It's in Utah, next to right in Provo, Utah. I'm not Mormon, but it's right in Utah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So in this crash, you want to be owning hard assets, things that protect you. Uh, stable assets. What about what about cryptocurrencies? What about something like Bitcoin? You, you've spoken on this subject as well. How do you feel about Bitcoin relative to this crash? I own Bitcoin, but I took Bitcoin as a technical trade. You know, it went up to twenty thousand a while ago, and then dropped. When it dropped, I bought it. But right now, I don't know. Uh, just yesterday, a crypto bank crashed. I don't even know that. Silver Silver Bank or Silvergate crashed. So everything is coming down. I hate to be, you know, I hate to be chicken little and 
bear of bad news, but that's why on my tweet, I was begging people, especially your generation, you got to change your thinking, you know, get rid of those, that mantra, go to school, get a job, work hard, you know, buy stocks and bonds, save cash. Three times, Andy Sheckman, the smartest guy I know, a three times crash is coming. First of all, all paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. Second, real estate. Third, and I've always said cash is trash. I hope I'm wrong. Well, you've, look, not everybody's right all the time, but you have been right before. I remember you were calling for a market correction, a, a big crash, and it happened last year. It was a big, you know, in terms of GDP, stocks and bonds together combined was the largest crash on record, worse right. than 2008. In terms relative to the U.S. GDP, not a lot of people right. know that. Very good. Terrible, terrible year. Well, because our debt, our debt to GDP, you know, in 2008, wasn't that bad. But then after when it crashed, then Bernanke started printing, you know, they call it quantitative easing. It's printing money. And so uh, that's why in 2013, I wrote the book, Rich Dad's Prophecy, to warn people that the crash was going to get bigger. In 2013, I wrote that book, and it's going to get bigger because the debt to GDP, David, as most people know, is 130 debt to GDP. It's the biggest in world history. Our debt is through the roof and Powell is raising interest rates, which makes that debt more expensive. I mean, you don't have to, be, you don't have to go to school to know that one. <laughs> Our schooling system is, um, is, a, is, a, is a topic for oh. another discussion. Oh, don't, don't get... You know, they'll, 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 they'll send the dogs after me for that. How, how dare you attack school teachers? Uh, well, I, look, you, you, you yourself, you yourself are an educator, but you learned the, the, you, you learned through the school of hard knocks in life. Now, when you book, when you wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, we, we, there wasn't this period of inflation that we are seeing today. How do you feel about inflation? Because that, that is a key factor in personal finance. We have to plan for our wealth being eroded year after year if inflation persists. Do you think inflation is going to persist or do you think it's going to continue coming down? I think it's here to stay for a while. And the reason is it's not that they, they printed you know, trillions after COVID. <clears throat> but the real reason is in the, what was the first act that uh, communist Joe Biden did? His first act was he cut off the Keystone XL pipeline from Canada to America? And I'm I sell oil. I don't oil. I don't. You know, I I used to be an oil tanker officer for Standard Oil. I don't touch paper assets. I don't touch stocks, bonds. I don't. You know, I, I wouldn't buy an Exxon stock. I wouldn't buy Standard Oil stock or Chevron, whatever they call it now. I buy the physical oil. And my oil wells are in Dakota, North Dakota. Louisiana and uh, Texas. And so I was selling oil. Biden comes to office. My friend Donald Trump, and he and I wrote, Trump and I have written two books together. He's a good friend of mine. And what happened is when Biden took office, his first act was to cut off the Keystone XL pipeline, again, running from Alberta to America. I was selling oil at down that day for thirty dollars a barrel on the on the spot exchange, as you know. That day went to one hundred thirty dollars a barrel. When that happened, I knew what Biden was up to, or the communists are up to. By the way, this is one of the first books I read at school. It's called the Communist Manifesto. I read this in nineteen sixty-five. Went to the academy in New York. Anyway, as soon as they as soon as Biden cut off the Keystone, oil went from thirty to one hundred thirty. A barrel. Immediately, I knew what he was doing. They're crushing the poor and middle class. So this is the ir irony of it, David. Guys like me get richer. So you know, you sell oil from thirty dollars, also get a hundred thirty. I almost voted for Biden after that one. <laughs> I said, "Thank you, Joe." But then I realized what he's doing. He's going to crush the poor and middle class, and that sets us up for revolution, David. Why is there this anti-oil movement right now that's so pervasive? I understand the whole environmental argument. I get that. But to cut off oil, the, the, the lifeline of our society right now, seems a bit premature to me. Where am I wrong? Well, just look at what happened a few weeks ago. 
and I mean, uh, within Biden's term, well, first Biden cut off um, Afghanistan. He left American troops behind. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I flew in Vietnam twice. When he cut off, the second move he did was he, he took us out of Afghanistan. He left troops behind. That's criminal. What he did, I mean, every veteran should be up in arms against. I'm a U.S., I mean, United Asian, but I fought for America. My uncles fall fought for our America. When he cut us, took us off Afghanistan, I went, holy mackerel. And that day, Saudi Arabia negotiated with Russia. Okay, so that started to happen. So he was cutting first oil, and then Saudi Arabia would betrayed. So when Biden went to Saudi Arabia, they laughed at him. Because here's this guy purporting Green New Deal, Biden. And why would the Saudis like him? And so when Xi, you know, Premier Xi from China was there, they gave Xi, you know, the, the welcome like he was Saddam Hussein coming back again or, you know, Karl Marx coming back again. I mean, the, the Saudis love China because uh, Saudi Arabia, just a couple of weeks ago, Saudi Arabia agreed that they would pay China in RMB, remember, not the dollar. Because, you know, the dollar, as most people know, was 1974. When Nixon came to office, he took the dollar off the gold standard in 80, uh, 81, no, 71. And then, um, he sent Kissinger to Saudi Arabia, and the U.S. dollar in 74 became the petrodollar. So in 74, the, pet, the dollar was no longer backed by gold. It was backed by oil. Let's assume in the future that oil is traded in RMB or any other currency it is the size of the U.S. dollar. Okay, well, more of it. I'm saying a more. What hap? Let's say a bigger share of oil is being traded in non-dollar currencies. What happens to America then? <clears throat> but they're going to send all those dollars back to America. You see, as long as you, as long as in 70, 71, Nixon took the dollar off the gold to seventy four, Kissinger put the dollar back by oil. So all of these guys hold dollars because an uh, oil-backed dollar was valuable. So now it's no longer gold, no longer is oil. What, what is a dollar? This is trash. And you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, it says cash is trash, savers are losers. I could see all this coming. So what's going to what's happened this year, David? This year, as we talk, those dollars are trash. And people are saying, oh, go to school, save money. You got to be nuts. You got to be really ignorant. Not to, not to do. I just say buy a silver eagle, U.S. eagle or Canadians. Canadians have great silver coins. Buy silver because it's only about 30 bucks an ounce right now. It's cheap. So besides buying silver and gold in hard assets, how do people become rich dad today? I mean, I'm looking at your sign in the back, cash flow. You've got the cash flow board behind you. How do we generate cash flow, passive income, which is one of the tenets you preached in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in today's high inflationary environment? Well, I'm still a real estate guy, but I'm not, I've, never been a, I've never been a flipper. You know, guys were buying a house for 10000 and selling it for 20000 I don't do that stuff. I buy income-producing real estate. Like if you owned farmland and it's producing, let's say, Alfalfa, that's an asset. I own cattle. I own I own a Wagyu cattle because what I sell is the Wagyu bulls semen. You know, those cash flow, I should change that to semen flow. <laughs> 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 and what that's hanging behind me is, you know, George Gammon. He always talks about the economy is hanging on this hot air balloon. And that little basket down there is us, you know, just dangling from this balloon. And that balloon happened in, um, <clears throat> as most people know, in 2008, when Bernanke, who was awarded the Nobel Prize, can you imagine that, printed trillions of dollars to blow the economy into a bubble. And it was the everything bubble, you know, stocks and bonds went up, real estate went up, and he kept dropping interest rates. So the, so the dollar became more valuable. But what, what happened this year, David, is that balloon's coming down. It's called what Andy Shepman calls the three times crash. Stocks, bonds, and mutual funds crash. Real estate crashes. 
and cash is trash. It's going to start flowing. The U.S. dollar, I mean, is going to start flowing back to the U.S. because treasuries are going down. Well, we know what we can do with stocks and bonds. We can just sell them ahead of a crash. We're into a crash. Most people live in their homes. Most people aren't well enough, well off enough to buy a second property as an investment. So what can homeowners do right now? Well, it depends on your debt to equity structure, as you know. If you bought a house for 100000 and then it went up to 200000 and you took a home equity loan to pay off your credit card debt, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? But that's all people are doing. They're refinancing their home equity loans. They're taking shh. They're taking short-term debt, which is cash uh, credit cards, and turning it into long-term debt called a home equity loan. That's really financial ignorance. And that's why, you know, David, all the years you've interviewed me, I've always said, why don't they teach money at school? You, you actually said before, and I've heard you say this in your own podcast, that real estate is a liability. Yes. I mean, accounting accountants might disagree with you, but you've got your own definition. Explain. Well, an asset is somebody something that puts money in your pocket. So every time my Wagyu bulls donate semen, their their semen is my cash, my semen flow. It's an asset. Okay, but if the if the Wagyu bull stops producing semen and starts eating alfalfa, that Wagyu bull turns into a liability. So if I have a piece of property that's producing, let's say, a hundred thousand dollars a year income it's an asset but my personal residence is costing me a hundred thousand a year it's a liability so it's by the definition of cash flows it's basically you know the financial statement you know income stands asset liabilities and that's all rich dad poor dad is you, you look at rich dad poor dad it's just the definitions of words assets liabilities you know there's three types of income earned portfolio passive what's the difference in those words does repo market reverse repo? If you understand basic financial literacy, you have a chance of survival. You are a, well, okay. Let's go back to real estate for just a minute. And I want to talk about your new book. You, you, you've purchased a lot of real estate yourself. You, you own a lot of doors. You're a successful investor. How were you able to convert this liability into an asset? Presumably you don't, you know, the whole bags full of liabilities, right? You make money on your real estate. How'd you do that? Well, because we, um, as interest rates kept going down, we kept borrowing out the lot, the equity, which was so. Now we we could be in trouble also, but the but the the good thing is our our uh, income far exceeds our liability, so we can still afford to refinance, get new loans. But if, as Andy Sheckman says that the repo markets went to reverse repo. In other words, they won't give out loans anymore. There'll be runs on the bank. There'll be bail-ins, not bail-outs, and the whole economy crashes. If and only if they don't, uh, if the bonds that everybody, all the banks are holding go upside down. And so that's what happens when Powell raised interest rates those bonds are holding got toasted. That's my concern, David. It's just basic finance. You know, if a, you have a bond at 5%, but suddenly bonds are now 10%, your 5% bonds are not worth anything. When the economy crashes, when all of real estate crashes, like you predict, are there pockets around the US where housing markets will be more stable? Yeah. Real estate is not tend to do with housing. It has to do with jobs. So the one thing good about Arizona, the reason I got out of uh, California and Oregon, I moved to Arizona because, you know, TSC, Taiwan Semiconductors moved here. So years ago, Arizona was called Silicon Desert. So they, they were moving. So Taiwan Semiconductors, the uh, conductor, semiconductor market, Moved to Arizona, they have a they have like campuses out here. They're like Google out here. So as long as there's jobs, real estate be okay. If you're if your your apartment house, which most of my apartment houses are, are next to oil wells like in Houston and Dallas and Oklahoma, real estate's okay because as long as there's jobs, real estate's okay. But if let's say 
you know, let's say Google left. Oh, I mean, I think what didn't, uh, who was that left? What's his name? The, the real smart, the, uh, the real brilliant, brilliant entrepreneur of our time guy who, who, who just trashed twit Twitter. Um, Elon Musk. Yeah. He moved to Texas. See, that's what I watch. Where, where are the jobs moving to? That's real estate. If you're predicting a crash in real estate and it's if, it, if it's linked to the jobs market, I'm assuming you're also predicting unemployment to go back up. We're currently at 3.4%, which already, is low. It yes. already is, but they don't tell the truth. The government lies. You know, how many jobs did um, Microsoft let go of? How many jobs did uh, Tesla let go of? You know what I mean? What's happening? Just watch the facts. Don't listen to the news. Except listen to Robert Kiyosaki. But uh, uh, Robert, David, which sectors um, do you, if you're, if you're speaking to the labor force today, people are concerned. What Which sectors do you think will be most at risk of losing jobs besides tech? Well, again, it's what's producing. So I like <clears throat> my apartment houses are next to oil wells. Not all of them. Most of them are. Okay, so it's it's just common sense, David. But if I was right now living in, let's say, uh, Hawaii, I'd be, you know, I don't own any real estate in Hawaii except for one house. But Hawaii would be toast. Your real estate, there'd be toast. But the good news is if China attacks Taiwan, then Hawaii will boom because, you know, the Taiwanese will move to Hawaii so they can hide there. So a lot is demographics, as you know. It depends on where people run to. And people are running right now. Okay. I want to finish our discussion by talking about you and your new book. Uh, your whole life, you've worked for yourself. You've been an entrepreneur. At what point did you decide that that was the role, that was the goal for you in life? You even wrote in your, in your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Jobs is an Acronym. I'll let you explain what that acronym is. Well, job stands for just over broke <laughs> because of taxes. Who pays the highest taxes? You know, that's, that was my second book, cash, cash Flow Quadrant. Employees around the world, David, employees pay 40% in tax around the world. The second are self employed or small business entrepreneurs or doctors and lawyers, self employed. They pay 60%. Big business guys like me pay 20%. And hardcore inside investors like me pay 0%. We don't pay taxes. That's why when Trump was running for office against Hillary and Hillary said to him, well, we don't pay taxes. And Trump says, because I'm smart. The reason I don't pay taxes is simply because, you know, there's three types of income, earned, portfolio, passive. Passive income is 0%. Portfolio is 20%. That's when you flip stocks, you flip real estate. And earned is when you work for money, like a doctor, a lawyer, or an employee, that's 40%. So it's just common sense. Just check the tax rates. I wrote that in Cashflow Quadrant, my second book. Everyone should read Rich Dad, Poor Dad if they haven't already. I see it still in bookstores today after almost 30 years. You published this in the 90s. So congratulations on that. Uh, even at airports, they have Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Give us one lesson you've learned from the army during your army days that you uh, wish Marine young Corps. civilians. It's a Marine. 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 That's, I apologize. That's, that's aircraft I flew. You were a Marine veteran. Uh, give us one. Give us one. Oh, well, you probably learned several lessons. But what do you want young people, young civilians today to understand? Maybe a lesson or uh, or 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 um, or an experience you've had serving our country from the Marine Corps that you wish young people could learn today? Well, like I said, I studied this book, Communist Manifesto. I read that in 19, I went to the Academy, Merch Marine Academy, and all, it's also, I pointed to a Naval Academy, but I took Merch Marine Academy. But the most important thing is this, when I was flying this aircraft, we went down three times, crashed. We didn't get shot down. The aircraft was so tired, you know, you just kept falling out of the sky. But the thing that works, we had the best team. You know, as soon as my engine quit, I was about 1,500 feet flying into North Vietnam, not north, but just south of the demilitarized zone. My engine quit. Immediately, what pilots do is they raise the nose generally. What the trainers to do, 
is dive the nose. And so the moment I did that, I, I heard my crew members, they were jettisoning all the cans of ammunition, dropping the machine guns and dropping the rocket pods. And we're, we were in the water within like 10 seconds. But it was the most powerful team, young guys too, two pilots, one crew chief, and two young Marine gunners. We're a team. So what's going to get you through probably the next 10 years is how tight your friends are, how tight your team is. You know, so that's why I count you as one of my assets because you you allow me to speak. And as you know, our freedom of speech is being taken away as this guy demanded. So it's going to depend upon who your friends are, you know, are they smart, are they stupid, and things like this. So when things happen, you know, you got to have a team. My team at Rich Dad is ungodly. They are such a high performance team. Small, we only 10 people, but we kick ass wherever we go. And thanks a lot to my wife. My wife did a great job. You know, I wouldn't be here without Kim. And we're a, we're a tight team. Kim and I get divorced, unfortunately. But your team right now is crucial. So the final words, as Marines say to each other, Semper Fi. Semper Fi means forever faithful. Well, uh, to close off, I'd like to just say thank you for your message. I personally aspire to be a rich dad one day and live by some of the principles you've preached in that book. So thank you for inspiring us with your work and your thoughts. I look forward to reading your next book. I'm yeah. sure it'll be just as good as the last. Oh, so I'll you. make sure you got a personal. It, it's a, it's going to be a rare book. It's only printing 500 of them. But capital, you know, capitalism teaches uh, people how to fish. Marxists teach people how to steal fish. Where else can where can people find, can we get this online? Are you no, selling no, this no, online? No. I assume it's, it's it's just like I said. It took me five or ten. Oh, minutes okay. To write it. So we'll know after April sixth. I'll make sure you get a copy of it because you know, congratulations because you're now a capitalist, which which wow. in which in you know you're in Vancouver, right? Yes. I love yes. Vancouver, man. There's more. There's more. I call them Frito Banditos in Vancouver. Because <laughs> my first, my first gold company, we formed it in uh, Vancouver. We took it public on Toronto Stock Exchange. Yeah. We struck gold in Dalian, China, and as soon as we struck gold, the Chinese government nationalized it. But thank God, this one came public. It's call sign ODV on the New York Stock Exchange. Took it public in July 2022. It's the richest, <clears throat> richest gold mine in America. It's 140 years old. So ODV. <clears throat> but it's it's the richest gold mine in the world because it's 140 years old. It's producing. You know, it's a great story. We got it for cheap. And uh, we're making a fortune on it. But anyway, I believe in gold and I believe in hard assets. I don't believe in paper assets. So that's why I, say I don't invest in anything you can print except my books, <laughs> but they go hard. <laughs> God bless books. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate your time. I'm sure our audience appreciates you as well. I hope well, David, to congratulations on your step out thank into you. capitalism. Wish you the best of luck. It's, it's like step, it's like Wiley e. Coyote. You kind of step off the edge of the cliff and hope you can flap your wings hard enough. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ho hopefully, there's a cushion uh, at, at, the, uh, at the bottom of the cliff for me. And uh, thank you for watching the David Lynn Report. Now, a word from our sponsor Equiton helps investors build their wealth by offering easy access to all types of investment grade real estate through their proven high performing real estate investment fund options. Equiton offers true diversification, full transparency, and all the benefits of real estate investing without the difficulties of financing, tenant management, building management, or project management. Be sure to learn more about their funds and projects in the link down below in the description box. Thank you for watching the David Lynn Report.